Welcome everyone to our chapel chat. This is for Tuesday, July 7th. As you can see, this is not Father Matthias. This is <laughs> Sister Mary Jacinta. She's my biological sister on her home visit from the convent. So we decided to record a few of these little chapel chats together. So Sister, how about you just tell us a little bit about yourself? I am a Dominican Sister of Mary, Mother of the Eucharist. Our mother house is in the Diocese of Lansing in Ann Arbor. And I entered in the year 2000 when Joe was just a little kid. <laughs> <laughs> and I have been serving all over in Texas and in Ohio for a while. And now I'm coming back to Michigan. So I'll be serving in St. Clair Shores this upcoming school year. And I'm looking forward to be back in Michigan. I'm very happy to be here. Great. Well, let's just jump right in. Would you mind reading the gospel for us? Sure. A reading from the gospel according to Matthew. A demoniac who could not speak was brought to Jesus. And when the demon was driven out, the mute man spoke. The crowds were amazed and said, Nothing like this has ever been seen in Israel. But the Pharisees said, He drives out demons by the prince of demons. Jesus went around to all the towns and villages, teaching in their synagogues, proclaiming the gospel of the kingdom, and curing every disease and illness. At the sight of the crowds, his heart was moved with pity for them, because they were troubled and abandoned, like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, The harvest is abundant, but the laborers are few. So ask the master of the harvest to send out laborers for his harvest. So it's interesting at the beginning of this gospel that there is a physical thing going on. The man is mute, but the cause of this is a demonic thing. It's not purely just a physiological thing. And it reminds me of something that often comes up in conversation with parishioners when they're dealing with things like that, that we, we can't just completely rule out the presence of the evil one, even when we're dealing with something that seems like it's purely physiological. There may very well be some uh, demonic presence going on in the midst of that difficulty. Now, on the other hand, something else that can happen is you can sort of over-spiritualize things sometimes. You can start thinking that it's all just uh, spiritual warfare and all I have to do is just pray more and that'll make it all go away. But sometimes we also have to, there has to be like the human side of things, you know, whether that's going to counseling or seeing a doctor, if there's like a scientific reason. And, so in those different situations, I think it's important to keep both of those realities in mind that yes, there may be a human side to this, but there is also a spiritual side to this. And if we want to really be free from this oppression or whatever the difficulty is, we need to take a look at both of those things together. Mm -hmm. As a Dominican, that's a huge part of our spirituality. There's an emphasis, historically speaking, with Dominicans and the incarnation. Mm -hmm. And we have a big devotion to the holy name of Jesus. and. I, I know it's not particularly Dom Dominican to claim an edge on the term of balance, but we want to always find a balance. And yeah. that's one of the things that we emphasize is the body and soul. Yeah. And um, if it comes to mind in this instance, because I know it's a little bit countercultural at this point to be trying to focus on both because yeah. the world wants us to focus on the body the right. human part because that's pleasure seeking and they can get more money for out of you and all yeah. of that so um to keep in mind the body and the spirit but then like you said not overemphasizing the spirit so to keep the balance i right. think that's so healthy and um it struck me too on the latter half of the gospel how jesus is looking at the people with pity and um, if you were in looking at it with the overly spiritual side, you would say, why wouldn't Jesus just fix it? Like right. God, he has the power to do that, right. to step in and make it better, yeah. you know. But he says, pray for the rich harvest. So he's saying, yeah. we need to act. We right. need to participate. In right. it. And if we do that by ourselves, if I step in as a human and I do it, it would be pitiable. <laughs> <laughs> but if I step in as a disciple of Christ and I come in under his authority, I yeah. can do great things. Yeah. And that's not me, but he uses my body and my humanity and um, he uses it for his glory. And that's just a great wonder to think about how God yeah. stoops down to us and lets us participate right. in his 
story of salvation in such a wonderful way. And even the fact that his heart was moved with pity. That is so good that we have a God that's like that, right? It, it wouldn't, it doesn't have to be that way. God could care. He, if he wanted to, he didn't have to care about us. Yes. He could, you know, I'm sure he's perfectly happy being God. It's probably awesome, right? <laughs> but because God is so good, he chooses to have pity for us and to care about us. Mm -hmm. And I think as Christians, that's something we can take for granted because it's just talked about. It's just, it's so deep in our awareness of who God is and who we are. It seems like it could never be any other way, but it could be another way. God could be totally different. And in fact, many of the, the pagan gods or their awareness of who God was, was like that. Gods were seen as these kind of horrible, uh, powerful beings that were violent and, and, and full of revenge. And uh, it's just such a blessing to have a God that, that is good, <laughs> who cares about us. Mm -hmm. I was actually talking about, about this passage with Father Matthias and he sort of made a similar point that you were just saying that God didn't just show up and fix everything immediately, but he invites us to participate. And I wonder if the, if the disciples, when they, when we're there and they, they see all these problems, maybe at first they're sort of surprised, like, wait a second, Jesus, like, why don't you just fix it? Like, yes, here it is. You yes. know what to do. You're God. You're all powerful. Why don't you do it? And maybe they were even intimidated by the invitation. Jesus didn't just fix everything, but he says, the harvest is abundant. The laborers are few. Ask the master of the harvest to send out laborers for his harvest. You need to be a part of this. I'm calling you to go out and do my work in the world. And it's something that's been carried out throughout the, the millennia, uh, even I, until now. I mean, that's certainly yeah. the, crucial to the Dominican way of life, being a part of this work of God in, in the world. Well, and I resonate well with that concept of being intimidated. I mean, you and I, a man and a woman who are in the field of ministry, it's, yeah. it's mind-blowing to me that God can use me the way that He does. Right. But one of my main goals is to simply get out of the way. Yeah. So to not let that intimidation deter me in any way, because then that's putting the focus on myself. But it's kind of neat being visiting with my family right now and being around little kids more than I typically am. And I'm watching, you know, little two-year-old Charlie and how he wants to help with things. And, you know, when he helps, it's not helpful. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we were popping popcorn last night and it took like five times longer. <laughs> but he, you know, it was so delightful to help him be, do it himself. And I kind of wonder in a small way if that's an analogy of what it's like for God with us. Right. And, and I'm sure he delights in us, but, you know, our little pathetic way of doing things. But then, you know, we did have popcorn in the end, yeah. even though <laughs> yeah. he couldn't have done it by himself. But yeah. I just like to think of that relationship that God has to us. And it's a beautiful image to think of it that way. Amen. Well, could you close us with a little prayer? Sure. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, we praise you and thank you for your great love. Thank you for looking upon us with mercy and love. Thank you for letting us participate in your story of salvation. Thank you for your abundant life in us. Please send us a harvest. Send us laborers for this good harvest. And give us strength as we follow you to be faithful to you and to be channels of your abundant love to all those we meet. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.